In this video, I'd like to talk about the Menger sponge, which is a fractal that is named after the Austrian-American mathematician Karl Menger. And this fractal here has a lot of unique properties, but to get a general idea of how it's formed, we need to think about it step by step. And the essential process is that we start with a cube. And with this cube, we will essentially divide it into 27 equally sized smaller cubes. And you can imagine doing this by taking each of these faces and dividing it into nine squares. And you can imagine doing that on each of these six sides. So let me draw this in quickly. And once you divide up each of these faces into nine squares equally sized, you will notice that the overall shape is divided into these 27 cubes. You can count that there are nine on the top row, and then there are three rows, which means that you have nine plus nine in the middle row and nine on the bottom row. And once this has been divided into the 27 cubes, you will then remove the middle cube in each of the faces and you will also remove the cube from the very center. So this right here is the starting point with just a solid cube, and then this right here, this is step number one, where you can see that the middle cube from each of these six faces has been removed, and then the cube in the very center has been removed as well. So dividing this into 27 cubes, the first stage in this iteration, this creation of the fractal, will result in just 20 cubes. Since one cube was removed from each of the six faces and then one cube was removed from the very center, which means that seven in total were removed from the original 27, meaning that there are 20 cubes left. And after step one, that same process will be repeated for each of these remaining 20 cubes. And essentially, for each of these remaining cubes, let's just focus on one of them, it will be divided up into 27 smaller cubes, and then the middle cube from each of those faces will then be removed as well as the cube in the very center. So let me draw a quick sketch of that. And once this cube has been subdivided into 27 smaller cubes, like I mentioned, the middle cube and each of the faces will then be removed as well as the cube in the very center. And this process will be carried out for each of these 20 remaining cubes. And once that process is carried out, you will reach step two, which looks like this image here. And of course, from here, for each of these remaining smaller cubes, they will each be subdivided into 27 even smaller cubes, and then the middle cube from each of the faces will be removed, as well as the cube in the center. And that process will be carried out infinitely many times where you can see step three here. And after this infinite process, you end up with this shape here, which is called the Manger sponge. And like I mentioned, this shape has many unique, interesting properties. For instance, if you calculate the volume of this shape, how much three-dimensional space that it actually takes up, the volume as the number of steps or the number of iterations are carried out to infinity, this volume is equal to zero. But if you look at the surface area, how much space each face of this surface takes up, and again, you carry out this process infinitely many times, then the surface area will be infinite. So the shape has a volume equal to zero and a surface area equal to infinity. And if we look at the fractal dimension of this shape, the dimension D is approximately 2.73. And for the volume, surface area, and this dimension, we will look at those topics in a future video. And you might notice that this shape is essentially the extension of the Sierpinski carpet into space, where if you just focus on one of these faces, let's say this face right here, then you might notice that this is essentially just the Sierpinski carpet if we ignore 
the dimensions going backwards. And the Manger sponge is essentially just that carpet extended into space. Now, we can look at some animations of how this is actually created so that it's a little bit more visual since this can be a little bit complicated to visualize. So let's look at some animations. And this animation shows that we take this original cube, we split it into 27 smaller cubes and then remove a cube from each of the six faces and we remove the cube from the center. Now, this is only carried out to five different steps, but it gives you a rough idea of what the shape is approaching as these steps are carried out infinitely many times. Now, another very interesting animation is if we take a cross section of this shape once the process has been carried out infinitely many times. So let's take a closer look at that. And what you can see here is that we have the completed mega sponge and then you can imagine a sheet is cutting off this upper corner here and we're able to see what the interior of this actually looks like. And this creates an incredibly detailed picture. So I will just let this animation play a little bit, but remember that this shape has a volume equal to zero and a surface area equal to infinity.